peer group connection is a program in which um, senior students help freshman students have an easier transition to high school. This is a program that, that turns peer pressure into something positive. It just helps you in every day. It's teaching me so many things. It's something that's preparing me for the future. It's helping me for college. This sets up a foundation for kids that can help them in science, in math, in, in just learning how to be better people. Since 1979, Peer Group Connection has been implemented in over 150 schools nationally as well as in schools abroad. The Princeton Center for Leadership Training partners with schools to implement Peer Group Connection. The Princeton Center trains educators to develop the leadership and communication skills of high school seniors to become peer group leaders for freshman students. The goal is to help students transition into high school and develop a sense of belonging with the school and with other students. It's a comprehensive, effective, and proven way to keep students in school, develop their communication and interpersonal skills, and raise academic performance. We know uh, as educators uh, that young people, adolescents, are greatly influenced by their peers, um, that they depend socially for the support and uh, approval of their peers. And so it made perfect sense to me that one of the most effective ways to help freshmen make a transition to high school was to develop the leadership skills of older students and have them lead discussions and be the positive role models uh, that would greatly influence and help change the climate for their younger peers. The overall structure of peer group connection consists of a stakeholder team, two to three faculty advisors, and 12 to 16 peer leaders who work in co-leader pairs to facilitate outreach sessions with small groups of freshman students. In each school, a team of six to eight individuals meet regularly to develop a foundation for long-term program success and sustainability. The principal is a key member of the stakeholder team. It certainly takes a commitment to implement peer group connection in a, in a high school. Um, and a commitment not just on the part of the teachers who are selected to be faculty advisors, but you really need to build a stakeholder team. You know, I have three teachers that are totally on board with this initiative, and those students know that they can go to them for anything. And then those teachers know that they can come to me, and I will do everything in my power to make sure that this program works. There are no roadblocks, and, and that's my job to break them down. We had three teachers who wanted to be involved in the program. So I think that is very important because it's not a program that you can just put on someone's plate. That person has to want to be involved. Each program has two to three faculty advisors who attend comprehensive training to prepare them for their role. So it's easy to remember and it's easy to understand their methodology and then to apply it. It's probably one of the best training programs I've, I've ever been to. If we want to guide groups in getting to ground rules, what can we learn from her modeling? You know what surprised me? How diverse the schools were that were mm -hmm. represented. You know, there were private schools from very wealthy areas, and then there were inner city schools, and there were rural schools, and American schools in other countries. And it was just such a diverse group that what was interesting was to see that they brought us all together, and with their abilities, they tied everything together to make us all see that the kids are kids. Ninth graders are ninth graders, and they all need the same thing. Approximately 12 to 16 students are carefully selected to work in co-leader teams as peer leaders. They attend a daily four-credit course with their faculty advisors where they learn leadership skills and how to be positive role models. Their leadership training starts over the summer during a three-day retreat with faculty advisors. It was the most memorable thing because I actually connected with other 15 people I never thought I could. Like, I actually trust them. You know how nowadays it's really hard to trust somebody. Then we came back to school and we were ready for it. We were completely ready for it. Like, any challenges that they threw at us, we were ready for them. 
we are selecting uh, upperclassmen who have a lot of healthy practices. I share my experience with them, what I went through freshman year and stuff, and how, what I've gone through so far up to senior year. And I think they, they're realizing, you know, oh, maybe we shouldn't do this because he's been through that. And also being as though there were 12th graders right there, that also makes them think like, oh, well, I got a 12th grader, you know, looking that I can look up to that's actually doing something positive. They're able to talk to us about anything that they need to talk about, if they have any problems that they want to discuss or anything like that. I remember one of the activities that we did, it was the blindfolding activity. Like, they didn't know where they were. And it, it, it reflected directly to what, they, what they're going through now. George Morales was a peer leader when he went to high school. Now he's a faculty advisor and was instrumental in bringing peer group connection to his school. A lot of our students come with so much baggage and they keep it inside. And I remember my first year teacher, I, I became aware of that. And now these seniors are becoming aware. And then, you know, they come to us and I'm like, well, you know, we'll help you. But if they're not comfortable with us, maybe you have to take the next step. And those peer leaders will guide them. You probably don't feel like comfortable talking to a, a teacher about some of the problems that you'll feel comfortable talking to a, another student about. At school, peer leaders attend a daily leadership class with the faculty advisors for which they receive academic credit. Here, they develop communication skills as they learn how to be positive role models and mentors to freshman peers. But you guys are there to help, and, and, and that one day, you know, you're going to say some activity that you're going to do. Um, with your freshman soon, it's, it's, they, you might reach that one freshman. The curriculum incorporates a wide range of activities that use multiple modes of learning, including group discussions, games, role playing, team building, and simulations. It's just a wonderful program, and the activities that Princeton designed are great. It covers time management, it covers personal issues, it covers grades, so it covers a whole realm of issues that freshmen would encounter when they come into a high school setting. You're using different methods of learning. You're not just sitting there being lectured to. You're getting up, you're moving around, you're listening, you're seeing things, you're creating things. The faculty advisors are modeling for their peer leaders co-facilitation, which is a major component of the program. Tierra Wilson and Stephen Tillman are two peer leaders who co-facilitate a group. And I didn't know how it was going to work because he seemed so quiet and calm and laid back and I'm so outspoken. You know, we had our ups and downs like every group. Every person has ups and downs and everything, but we learn how to get past them. We learn how to take our differences and, um, you know, make it our, our strengths and everything like that and um, help us develop it more as a, um, a group. Yeah, as they learn, I think we learn as well, all of us, all the, all the peer leaders. In the freshman outreach class, the co-leaders apply what they have learned from their peer leadership classes and act as facilitators for their own small group of freshman students. Issues covered include peer pressure, academic achievement, relationships with family and friends, substance abuse, violence prevention, time management, and diversity. They also work on improving essential skills such as critical thinking, goal setting, decision-making, active listening, and negotiation and refusal skills. Jasmine had the question about skipping school. And how serious do you think the consequences are for skipping school? You would have to go to summer school. After every activity, we do a reflection. And I think that's, that's the most important part of what we do because we get to know what they get out of the activity and what they thought of it. A lot of our freshmen, and particularly in, in some of our urban areas in the Northeast that we've been working in, the dropout rate is quite high and we may lose half of our students between freshman and sophomore year. It's easy for you to cut a class or skip school or something. Our goal is to maintain as many freshmen in high school. We want them to graduate. We want them, if 300 freshmen come in, we want like, you know 300 freshmen to graduate. On Wednesday I meet with my freshmen. I know I have should be planning a, before, like four or five days before, to make sure that day goes well. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Fine. Good. I'm very aware of things now. Good. Like when we're in a group and I see like, I see somebody st starting to want to talk and I'll tell my partner Felix, look. <laughs> Thank you.
Every peer group connection program includes two family night events where peer leaders facilitate activities and discussions with parents and other family members. One of the primary goals of family night is to improve communication between parents and their children. We had a family night and what it was that it gave it the parents a chance to see what we do with, their, with the freshmen and we did an activity with them so they can get a first hand look. We wanted to sit down with the parents of these freshmen and see how they were at home, how they were doing, if they noticed any changes in their behavior after PGC, you know, from let's say eighth grade to freshman year where they were introduced to PGC and stuff and just to let the parents know that there was also other people trying to help them keep their freshmen in school. While the adults were um, talking and participating. They were so involved, the parents were writing, we need more things like this. We need to have our PTO meetings run this way. It's just an incredible change that could, could be effective and not just on a student level, but bring it out to the parents and bring it out to the community. I certainly would have to say PGC is at the forefront in helping uh, to reduce our discipline referrals and at the same time to uh, give our kids motivation to come to school. So I don't feel all bunched up and just by myself without anybody else there. It gives me uh, different ways to express myself. I think the skills I've learned in PGC would help me out in a situation like to say no. Like I didn't really think that it was gonna help me a lot, but then, I, but then after a while, like it does, it does stick to you. It's a program where the students are buying into it. They feel a part of it. Hence, they've created ownership, and that is a positive encouragement for them to come to school. It's something for them to look forward to. You can really see the difference, and you know the the, the, plan, the attendance is better among the freshmen who have PGC. The grades are better, and the behavior's better. So all around, it's it's an improvement. I'm more mature, and PGC is helping me so much because you know it's your senior year. You tend to be like you know get senioritis or something or slack off, but you know I know that I cannot do that. I have people looking up at me now. It'll help me even. I'm looking down the road to like even when I become a father. I think it'll help. Life comes with many decisions, and if you don't have somebody to guide you and tell you, look, this is right, go to school, do your homework, don't hang out on the street, don't hang out on the corner. I mean, I wouldn't want that for my sister or my brother or anybody I know, and I wouldn't want that for any of my freshmen either. And so the greatest satisfaction is seeing the impact it can have on individuals, both the leaders and the freshmen, uh, and how it can really turn their lives around.